It's like, I guess that's, that's kind of like a hard question. It's sort of what people like miss. Uh, but I like the average show. I think of like, even just like booking the venue sometimes, like here it's fantastic that we have the pond where we can just do these things. But I know, so you know what I mean? Like, I've been to places before where there really is a struggle for getting venues, like say if one of them, the show kind of goes awry, something bad happens there, like there might not be shows in this town for a while after that because there was simply no venues that are willing to do it. So yeah, I think maybe some of the logistical issues people don't really pay attention to, but. Well, I think that's definitely true that there's there's things going on which like, which people wouldn't realize or like, which I wouldn't realize like if I would go to a concert. Um, not, probably some of them, it's like for the best that people don't realize them or like it would ruin some of the veneer. If there is any veneer on the concert, uh, of like, oh, this band is so, like, they know what they're doing or like they feel comfortable or whatever. You don't want, you want to, that to exist, that, that to be there, but, so I, I think like, there's nothing I would say that people should get out of it that, that they don't already. I mean, it's the best when you're in a, in a receptive mood, like if you can go and you're feeling like, oh yeah, this is good, or like hearing music, or you go and you're like, oh, I'm feeling a little inhibited, but then the music is like just there and you kind of forget about that for a bit, so you just can realize the music in a sort of a, you're not that connected to a, a sense of like, like worry or anything like that. That's the best, like when that can happen. And, and that seems like a combination of factors, but that would be worth that the bands probably drove a long ass time to play for free. Okay, a lot of people go to shows and then they go right home after, but no one maybe thinks about how the drummer has to pack his stuff up by himself, haul it to the show, load it in, set it all up. I don't drink until I play or after I play, and then usually that's the end of the night. Then I've got to pack all my stuff up again, load it out, and then take it all home. No one knows that, I don't think. Or some, who cares if they do? Some people might, but most people don't think about it. But I have to. Uh, honestly, I'm just happy people come out to show us. So. <laughs> what I kind of find to be uh, maybe underlooked at shows is the role of the drummer. In some ways, kind of like the goalie, there's this, uh, this pressure riding on you. Can't kind of hide those mistakes in the same way. And uh, no, I always enjoy uh, keeping an eye on the drummer because there's a lot relying on that, and there's a lot of rhythm to the show that is kind of really based off of that. Excuse the pun. I think it would be cool if people knew like how much it actually means when they show up. Like maybe they do, but. It's like for every familiar face that you see, that like, makes the show like that much more fun. It makes you that much more want to do a good job. And um, there's also like a lot of weird boring stuff that no one would notice, like making up set lists and uh, trying not to get too drunk when they play. <laughs> It's just the amount of actual effort that the performers put on, of like the actual songs they put on, and all of like the transitions between songs. Like, it is very hard to like kind of figure out a set list and then have that transition smoothly, so the crowd can like dig it and dance around. Oh, some of the music, I guess. But I mean, I don't know. Like when we were playing, I could see there was like a full table of just people like drinking. I saw one. I I don't know. It was like. I, I looked over and there was one guy that was sort of like doing that a little bit. He was like not engaged in any way outside of like, like it, it was entering like his like brain in some way. He was reacting to it, but like not, wasn't like focusing on it in any way, which is like fine. How many people are smoking weed? <laughs> this is how much time and energy bands put in to practicing for a show. Um, people don't realize that when they see a band, that band's probably only going to get, say, a hundred dollars, okay? And if there's four people in the band, that's twenty-five dollars each if you, if you want to break it up that way. But they put hours and hours into their craft, into rehearsing specifically for the show, making new songs. 
or you could even go way back and say that they've been putting in hundreds or thousands of hours into their instruments, into practicing their vocals, um, anything like that. So bands make a huge investment of time and energy and, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like they really get shortchanged and that's kind of just the way it is right now in independent Canadian music or like truly independent Canadian music. But there's a lot of people working hard to change that climate, which is something that's going to be really important to keep that kind of culture going in the next few years. But there will always be bands, there will always be people busting their asses to put on a good show. So that's cool.